What is going on everybody, it's your boy Collins, and today we're gonna learn how to create this specific effect. The possibilities are endless. Comment down exactly what you would Awesome. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, look, this is a very, very simple tutorial. It's no, it's not hard at all. All right, so today I'm only going to be providing you guys with the free sound effect. So uh, be sure to go ahead and download the customizable uh, invisibility sound effects that I'm actually going to be using in this specific tutorial. Just download it. The link, below, the link is below. Or if you know how to make, create your own one, that's great. Good news for you. But um, if you don't know exactly how to create sound effects, uh, just go ahead and download it and just attach it to your videos. So basically, guys, that's what we're going to be doing today in this specific tutorial. All right, so look, off the bat, I want to go ahead and explain exactly what I'm basically doing. I'm working with this simple composition, right? So I have I have two different layers, right? So um, if you guys definitely check out my previous tutorials, you should see exactly how to import and all kinds of stuff. But Again, this, this tutorial is a little bit more advanced, so you definitely need more. Um, you're going to need at least two different plugins, and I'm only going to be using advanced plugins. If you guys don't have that, there are other tutorials on YouTube that actually teach you guys how to use the basic ones, but today I'm only dealing with advanced stuff. So basically, off the bat, right, I have two different shots. I have one shot of the clean plate, which is my, which is my background, and then I have one where my subject is in the frame. So I'm going to rename the top as subject. And I'm going to rename the back, the bottom one as background. So make sure when you're shooting this video or you're recording your video, make sure you have a, a clean background, right? Where nobody is in the frame. And let's say if you have reflections over here in the mirror, make sure there's nothing like that showing. And then make sure you, you know, you shoot yourself or record yourself standing in frame as well, too. If you pay attention to the colorization, you can clearly see there's a bit of some sort of a... Uh, there's a bit of some brightness when I'm actually standing in frame, and then it gets a little bit darker as I'm out, as I move away from the frame. So here's exactly what we're going to do, right? Uh, you can disregard what I'm doing right now. Don't worry about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, first save my project, all right? So I'm going to save my project as invincibility. Uh, something, 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 tutorial. It doesn't matter. Just press enter and save the project. All right. Once I've basically saved my project, here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my subject layer, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way up here to the rotoscoping brush. I'm going to click on that brush, double click on my layer to open up a new layer, right? And it should say subject right next to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a nice rough roto mask around my subject. Right? Just make sure you draw a rough rotor mask around your subject. You can go ahead and zoom in, hold space on your keyboard to reposition, hold alt on your keyboard, or if you're using a Mac, it's option. Click on that and deselect these unwanted areas. So just make sure you go around my body or go around your subject in general and uh, just make sure you uh, select all the high-end detail and leave out the rest of those unwanted detail that we don't want because we're only focusing on this specific area, which is the effect itself. Make sure you select everything, all right? And uh, deselect these unwanted areas, deselect these unwanted areas, deselect these unwanted areas, and uh, be sure to just, you know. The problem with my shot is that there is a bit of uh, more information. Like, I, there's a lot of detail in the background. That's the reason why, you know, when I dropped the video on uh, Instagram, you guys, found it a little bit difficult to see it you know what i'm saying but yeah that's just basically how it is so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and press play all right so press play on your keyboard and what's gonna happen is it's basically going to play the video right but then the rotoscope is going to completely you know keep all these areas highlighted if that makes sense all right so we're gonna wait for that to happen Awesome. So as you can see, right, we have basically rotoscoped our layer out. Now, so here is the best way to go about it for me. If you if you ever want your video to not glitch and you don't want it to, um, you know, kind of like slow down or your computer to slow down, my best solution would be after you've basically rotoscoped your scene, right? You can clearly see it completely takes me out of the frame perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you guys how to do this real quick. Just go ahead and go to feather and maybe feather this out about 11.6 and then maybe reduce the shift edge a bit so that it kind of like removes all that unwanted areas away from our outer line of the body or the highlights of the body, if that makes sense. Once you've basically done that, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over, over here to the very beginning. I'm going to just basically solo this layer out, right? I'm going to come over here to file. I'm going to make sure I press export and I'm going to make sure I press render. 
once you have, once I've pressed render what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically come all the way over here into this section click on that come over here to h.264 and select QuickTime be sure to go ahead and click on the channels select RGB and select RGB plus alpha it's basically gonna basically uh, uh, um, only uh, what's it called export this specific frame now what I want you to do is go ahead and click on the output section this area and go ahead and type in maybe uh, roto or something like that and then press render and then it's basically gonna render out that specific frame once that's done once that's done come back over here into your this specific area close this out go to project double click this space and what I want you to do is go ahead and bring that rotor roto back into your frame import it back into your frame now once you've basically imported the rotor back into your frame click and drag it all the way down here and now it's basically in frame so if you basically turn off the bottom layer which we're not going to be using you can go ahead and click on the bottom layer come all the way over here and select this little um hiding thing if you don't see it click on toggle switches and modes to be basically to be able to see this now once you've clicked that come all the way over here and press hide layer it's basically going to hide that layer Change the color of the rotor layer to, ye I mean, to yellow so that you can actually know and see exactly what it is. Now, here's what, I, here's what we're going to do next, right? We're going to basically unsolo it, right? And we're going to start to apply some visuals to our subject. All right, what I want you to do is go ahead and come down here in this area, and I want you to right-click this space, go to New, and be sure to go to and click on Adjustment Layer. Once you've basically clicked on Adjustment Layer, what I want you to do next is I want you to basically go ahead and right-click right -click on this space, rename this to Chromatic This. Just, just rename it to whatever, man, so you know exactly what it is. Click on this area to basically unselect it. Now, what we're going to do is we're basically going to apply some effects in this chromatic displacement area, right? And then basically that's going to transfer all the way to the roto. Now, the funny thing is that most people use displacement map, but I don't want to use displacement map. I'm using Red Giant's um, trap code particular. I'm going to leave a link to their products in the uh, in, in the description below. What I want you to do is come over here to the effects and presets tab and I want you to go ahead and search up chromatic displacement if you have basically purchased it, right? Click on chromatic displacement, drag and drop it into the chromatic displacement layer at the very bottom. And basically it's going to place in that chromatic displacement into this layer. Now once you've basically done that, I want you to come all the way over here to this layer and go ahead and select roto. Then I want you to click on source and I want you to click on effects and masks. Now, once you've basically done that, I want you to go ahead and set a keyframe on displacement layer and set a keyframe on displacement amount. Then I want you to move about four frames forward and then I want you to go ahead and drag this displacement amount down forward and then go ahead and crank this all the way down to like around 50. I did forget to mention, I want you to go ahead and turn off the rotor layer. So you see what we just did right here? We have basically added a, a, a displacement to our subject. And basically, if you turn this layer off, whatever that's in this specific layer is now affecting this specific layer, right? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and come all the way to the soften. And I want you to play around with it a, a bit. If you want to have a little bit of some detail like this, you can always play around with it to get the look that you're looking for. For me, I like to kind of like have this sort of like uh, this look right here, you know? And so basically what's going to happen is it appears as if the guy comes out of nowhere and then appears into the scene. And now you can sort of like see him. So you see what we just did right here? That's exactly how you do this specific effect. It's, it's really simple. It's not that hard. But here's, here's exactly what we're going to do next, right? So here's what we're going to do next. So once we've done that, right, um, we're going to come all the way over here to the very bottom. We're gonna select chromatic displacement one more time. Hit Control D to duplicate it, right? Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move this time indicator a few frames forward, and you can see that it's duplicated twice, giving it more detail. But we're gonna do this. We're gonna go ahead and press Enter, and we're gonna rename this to Heat Distortion. Again, this is something that nobody ever adds, but I'm just adding it to just give it a bit of a, a different kind of vibe to the effect. Click on Heat Distortion. Come all the way over here to the Effects and Controls tab, click on the Chromatic Displacement, and just delete that Chromatic Displacement. Come to the Effects and Presets tab and search up Heat Distortion. Now again, you have to also buy this one as well too. This is from Video Code Pilot. Click on Heat Distortion, click on that, and drag it into the Heat Distortion layer. Now basically, if you pay attention, it basically adds a sort of a distortion layer to our whole entire frame, but we don't want that. So, what do we, so, this, so this is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna come all the way to the Toggle Switches and Modes, Click on that. Be sure to click on Track Mat. 
Select that and change this to Roto. Boom. Now it's only going to affect this specific Roto layer. That's exactly what we're doing. Now you can go ahead and play with the distortion amount. You can maybe leave it around like six. Heat distortion, you can bring it around like, you know, eight. This is gonna give it a bit of some vibes, like some sort of like heat is emanating from his body. And it's gonna just give it a bit of a wiggle. Now, if you don't have heat distortion, there is turbulent displacement. You can play around with that to get the same exact effect. I'm gonna change the wind speed to like 0.5 because I don't want too much of a wiggle coming from his body. Because what we're trying to create is sort of like a translucent, um, opaque type of vibe coming from our subject's body. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come all the way to the very beginning, right here where the heat distortion starts. We're gonna press T on the keyboard to bring opacity, set a keyframe on opacity, move this keyframe a few frames forward and decrease this to zero, and then close this out. Now, if you press play or by pressing spacebar on your keyboard, this is exactly what you should see. The possibilities are endless. Come. Now, if it's taking a long time to process, be sure to come all the way over here to full, change the resolution from full to quarter to give you that better look. The possibilities are endless. The possibilities are endless. You see what I'm saying? So you can play around with the detail that is coming off of our subject's body. If it's too much of uh, too much translucence, you can always play around with the uh, chromatic displacement. All right. So if it's like if it's too much, and let's say you wanted to reduce it, you can press chromatic displacement, press U on your keyboard, bring this time indicator to where the keyframe ends, and then maybe tweak this a bit. You know what I'm saying? If you wanna, you know, you can tweak it. You can tweak the um, the chroma. You know what I'm saying? You can reduce the chroma to give it much more of a translucent look where there's no color, or you can leave it exactly how it is. Again, feel free to play around with it to get the look that you're actually looking for, okay? You can always move the heat distortion below it, or above it, it doesn't really matter. Play around with it to get the look that you're looking for, and then after that, that should be it. Now, once you've basically added this specific effect, here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna come all the way to the project section, click on the project, come all the way to the sound effects tab, and click on the invisibility sound effects that I personally created. Click on that, drag it down here below into our composition, double click L on the keyboard to bring up the uh, sound waves property. Now let's say if this area is a bit shorter for you, you can come over here and drag this up a bit just so that you can be able to see the waveform. Now be sure to go ahead and drag this waveform a few frames forward. And then if you press play, it should look something like this. The possibilities are endless. Comment. Matter of fact, let me put this on quarter so you guys can see this better, hold on. The possibilities are endless. Comment down exactly what you would. The possibilities are endless. So, for example, you can even tweak this a bit and move this all the way to the far right. Something like this. The possibilities are endless. Come or you can bring it around here. The possibilities are endless. And then what you can even do is press L on the keyboard to bring up the audio levels. Set a keyframe on this and then come all the way to the very end. And just probably reduce this to like negative 44 so that the sound kind of like reduces as it continues. The possibilities are endless. The possibilities are endless. Comment down exactly what you would. The possibilities are endless. Comment down exactly what you would. The possibilities are endless. And that's basically how you do this effect. Now, of course, you can always add a bit of some color grade to this. You can always uh, tweak the, you know, you can tweak this as much as you want to get the look that you're looking for. But I really wanted this to be completely, um, uh, what's it called? Translucent. So let's say if we were to bring back our rotor layer and we turn it back on, this is exactly how it looks like. You see what I'm saying? And this is what it looks like with the distortion on it, right? My face looks a little bit distorted. I can basically turn this off. And that's basically how you do this simple effect. I do appreciate you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. And uh, hopefully you guys can actually get these two plugins that I've basically listed out in this specific video.